OBS or Open Broadcaster software is the golden standard nowadays when it comes to live streaming but also recording videos. And what can I say, it's very good at it. But it is also a very powerful tool with lots and lots of settings, which can get confusing really fast. So what are the best settings for getting the most out of your streamer recording? Well let's find out right after you hit that like button and heck why not also subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much. Okay, enough chatting. Let's jump straight into OBS. The first thing that we want to do is to open the settings and head over to the video tab. The video tab is for setting the resolution of the video signal. But why are there two options here? Well the first one is called the canvas resolution and it impacts the window that you see inside OBS. This canvas is essentially your drawing board where you can add scenes and sources. I personally recommend you to set this setting to either your monitors or if you're vlogging to your camera's max resolution, as long as it's above 1280 x 720p. The output scaled resolution is the one that your stream or video will end up with. Especially when streaming you might want to set it to something lower than your native monitor's resolution if your internet cannot handle it. But more on this later. For the best clarity here you should choose your native resolution as well. If you need to use a different resolution however, then you should choose Langsos as the downscaling filter, since it generally looks the best and does not have any impact on performance whatsoever. Last but not least, we need also to select the FPS of our streamer recording. On YouTube and Twitch, this setting should be set to 30 or 60 FPS. There are some differences between those FPS values besides fluidity, but more on this later. So now that we've set our stream resolution, we can move on to the output tab and it's where the most important settings are being located. The simple output mode already contains the best possible settings for most use cases and are generally really good. But hey, we don't want the best overall experience. We want the best settings for your specific use case, so let's switch over to the advanced tab. Let's start off by talking about what each setting does. First up, let's talk about the audio track. OBS offers us the opportunity to record several different audio sources separately. For example, if we want to stream with background music, but we are also recording it for a YouTube VOD, then we can simply say that background music shouldn't play on track 2. Now we could select track 2 in the settings and we successfully have different audio in our stream and recording. Pretty cool, right? The same thing is essentially done with the setting Twitch VOD track, whereas you want to send the same audio except the music to Twitch's VOD system. That's very important for copyright strikes. Next up is the encoder and it depends on your system configuration what settings are available to you. X264 means that encoding is done by your CPU and in the past for low bitrate streams like we see on Twitch and YouTube it was the better looking option. But it comes with a cost. For once, most of you probably don't rock a CPU with that many threads to spare for encoding. But even if you do, CPU encoding is still very expensive due to bandwidth troubles which could result in increased latencies. Generally speaking, I only recommend CPU encoding on systems that simply do not have other options or are separated from your gaming rig. Getting the best quality for your stream does not always mean the best clarity, but also the quality of you playing the game. If you play worse due to input lag or simply just the immense drop in FPS, then it might not be fun to watch the stream. Ooh, self burn! Those are rare. Plus, hardware encoding solutions like NVENC, AMP, or even QuickSync have become really good nowadays. And generally speaking, there are more important settings that you can tune to get the best quality. First, I'm going with AMP, since I own an AMD GPU. Quality wise, Nvidia's NVENC is still way ahead of AMD and we will cover those settings later up in the video. Oh, and I should also mention that most settings of AMP are also available for X264. Let's say that you want to stream to Twitch and record a YouTube video in 1080p. Now, sadly your internet connection can't handle 1080p, so you need to switch to 720p but you still want your video to be in 1080. Rescaling output helps us with that. Back in the video tab, we set our output resolution as 1080p for the YouTube video and rescale it to 720p for our live stream. Pretty cool feature. 
Now let's talk about rate control. For streaming, you want to set this to CBR, since this means that Twitch will receive a constant bitrate stream. Now, CBR is worse than VBR or other solutions in terms of quality. However, sometimes it can happen that if you send a stream with VBR to YouTube or Twitch, then the audio gets out of sync. And I don't think that you want that. Bitrate is quite easy. The higher, the better. Twitch officially supports a bitrate up to 6000 kilobit per second, but that's not quite the truth. In reality, Twitch can go as high as 8000 kilobit per second if you disable this checkbox in the stream tab. But you should be careful with this, since 8000 might not be handled that well by the specific Twitch server that you are connected to. In contrast to Twitch, YouTube supports way higher bit rates and resolutions, which is great, but also not that good given that YouTube transcodes everything, even the source resolution. Therefore, to get a higher bitrate on YouTube, you should also go more toward 60 FPS if your network and PC can handle it. The keyframe interval is best being set to 2 since it is a very good balance for most. The more keyframes you have, the more performance and when recording, also storage, your video will take up. Higher keyframes really only make sense when you're playing very fast paced video games with lots of movements, though 2 is generally enough. As the preset, we want to choose nothing lower than quality and of course the higher, the better it is going to look. The profile should be set to high, since this allows us to use special settings within the codec to improve visual clarity. And max B frames is typically best set around 2-4. to four. Uh, Hi there, Future Michael here. Um, so it turns out that there is currently an issue with the AMD encoder, where if you set B frames above 0, then it can cause an encoder overload. I just wanted to let you know. The difference between B frames and keyframes is that keyframes are uncompressed references for the video codec, in contrast to B frames, which can be compressed, but they consist of information of previous and forward frames, with some sort of prediction model. Now I'll spare you the advanced settings, since not only are they comparably very complicated, but also don't really add much to the image quality anymore. The key ingredients here are bitrate, keyframes, and B frames. But if you have an NVIDIA GPU, then we can go even further. Since the last year, OBS and NVIDIA provided new presets, which can help us to fine-tune OBS even more. Now I won't cover psychovisual tuning and look ahead in detail, since I've already done that last year. But here are some keynotes. Psychovisual tuning should always be enabled, since it really improves the image, especially when separating moving parts from more static ones. It uses CUDA cores for its processing, but it does not even have a measurable impact on performance, so look ahead on the other hand can improve your image, but only if not too much movement is going on, since look ahead works best when it can, well, predict the next image. For most, this setting is better left unchecked. For the preset, you want to ideally select P7, since it is the best for visual clarity, but you should definitely test the performance here. Next up would be quality tuning, and it should also be set to high quality. Please don't use the low latency options, since these won't provide lower latency for your stream or peripherals. They are only here if you want to share your OBS output to, let's say, MS Teams or Discord, something like that. Don't use it for broadcasting. Multipass or single pass? Hmm. Like, theoretically, multipass would be better, but effectively, it's really not. If you want to know more about this, then you should definitely check out this video made by EposVox. Yeah, Intel QuickSync settings should be self-explanatory now, so let's move on to recording, because there are quite some differences here. For once, the first thing you want to change is the recording format to something robust, like MKV. MKV, in contrast to MP4, has the big advantage that if OBS or your PC were to crash, you can still open and edit the video file. Can't do that with MP4. Now, like in the streaming tab, let's first choose our encoder. Since we are recording to a hard drive and are not limited by our network or the service guidelines, we can go ahead and choose a hardware encoder, since at higher bit rates, they typically generate even better videos than X264. 
For best compatibility, you should choose AVC, but if you want the same quality for less storage use, then you can either select HEVC or even AV1 if you have an RTX 4000 or an RX 7000 card. In contrast to streaming, we are now also way more flexible when it comes to rate control. I personally would recommend that you set this option to CQP, which tries to hold a certain level of quality for the whole video. The lower you set the CQ level, the better looking your video will be, however also the bigger the file size. Personally, I wouldn't go beneath 15, even though even 17 or even 20 is really good. Keyframe interval and B frames should be again set to 2 and everything else to high quality like in the streaming tab. And those were already most settings. But we're not quite done yet. Let's head over to the audio tab and make sure that we set the sample rate to the same value that we use on our microphone and headset. Very rarely it can happen that your audio gets out of sync if these values are not matched. Or maybe your voice sounds even a bit higher or lower pitched. If you notice that your colors are washed out, then you should take a look at the advanced tab and try out switching the color range from limited to full. One of the most common questions I've got asked last year was what you could do if your stream was stuttering. Now, there are two reasons on why your stream might be stuttering. You either drop frames or you skip frames. Dropped frames come from a bad or a low bandwidth internet connection. This issue can only be resolved by adjusting the quality options to something lower or upgrading your internet. The second problem are skipped frames and they occur when your system is overloaded. This is typically a Windows resource allocation problem since the game you're playing of course tries to get the best performance possible and just doesn't leave enough resources for OBS to work properly. This has gotten a lot better over the past couple of years, but still the easiest fix is to launch OBS as an administrator. This gives OBS more permissions to better allocate resources to itself. You can even make this temporary. And it works. And last but not least, have you ever seen someone stream in 936p and wondered why? Why don't they go to 720 or 900p? Why this weird number? Well that has something to do with compression. For streaming and recording videos, you typically use the codec H264, which works by splitting up the image in 4x4, 8x8 or 16x16 pixel blocks, which get updated individually if something happens, instead of rendering the whole image again. 936p is divisible by 4 and 8 and therefore the much better middle ground for quality than let's say 900p. If you want to get the max sharpness out of the overlays on your stream, then make sure to place them correctly. I even made a whole video about that. But for now, it's a wrap. So make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And all that's left to say now is, good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.